The folks at ICStation.com have sent me a little amplifier kit. 15 watt per channel based on a TDA7297, which is a BTL output IC. And this is a fairly straightforward, simple kit. Good for beginners. We're going to put it together and see how it works. Coming right up on Tech Talk. So let's get the package open here and uh, see what it contains. It's a 15 watt per channel uh, stereo module. This would be a linear amplifier, not one of those class D units. So this one's going to have some discrete components on here. It's a little kit they sell. We're going to assemble this tonight and uh, see how this one sounds. Shouldn't uh, sound half bad actually. So they don't doesn't come with much in the way of instructions. You get the schematic diagram here. I think we won't have any problem mounting the parts. That's going to be the volume control and the pot for that. We're going to have a looks to be this is probably the input. Yeah, J7. That'll be the input audio input and uh, a couple components, an IC and a couple resistors. So let's get mounting. First thing we'll do is we'll mount the IC just enough to put a little bit of a layer on the back here. Like that. Now I will mount the heatsink before I solder it in place. So mount the heatsink on the back there. That way I can center the IC. And I'll put the screw back through here. And then we'll solder this down to the board. Solder the heatsink tabs in place in place first. Okay, the IC is soldered in place. Next, we'll place the small capacitors, and they are marked two twenty four. There are. One, two, there's three of them. No, that one's a 104. So we've got C3 and C4 and C2. So C2 is the 104, so that's the one I'm holding in my hand now. So we'll mount that one first. And that one goes right down here. It's marked on the board too, right? So you really don't need the schematic. The values are actually mounted, are actually printed on the board. So that's it there, C2. So we'll mount C2 down against the board. Solder it in place. This kit shouldn't take more than a few minutes to assemble, so I'm kind of excited to hear actually how well this thing performs. So C3 and C4 are the 224s, and they go right here, C3 and C4. These are not polarity sensitive.
Now this kit came from IC Station. I actually have another another kit from them as well. This is uh, another little module that we'll be be showing this one off as well. And this is a um, this is the Bluetooth audio receiver, and I think it even has a USB jack so you can plug a memory stick in full of music. So this should be kind of a cool one to play with. This we'll be doing that one in a later later video, but. That'll be one of the next ones. I received three items from IC Station to test out and assemble and promote and stuff, so this is the second one. Okay, next we'll put in uh, D1. the LED in here as well. Now they are polarity sensitive. The positive terminal is the longer of the two leads. wonder what color that LED is. Probably blue. Power 47 is a uh, 4.7K, and I believe they're both 4.7K. There's only. Oh, it's a 47. Where's the other resistor? It's a 47. There's two 47K, and there should be 4.7. Here's the 4.7. Which is violet, our yellow, violet, red, and the 47 are yellow, violet, orange. So this is uh, this one's the 4.7K, which goes right down here. It's R3, and that is basically in line with the LED. That's the current limiter for the power indicator. Next we'll mount the other two resistors, the 47K resistors. There's only a few more parts as you can see to mount on this. It's it's pretty simple because everything is is buried inside the TDA 7297. That's got all your active components in it. These are just the support components to match the input with the impedance of the input and your volume control and main filter and pilot light and stuff, right? So everything else on this is all internal to the chip. Okay, what's left? Got a couple capacitors to mount. We have C5, it's polarity sensitive. The longer lead is your positive. And the positive goes facing the heat sink. So C5 and the large main filter. Again, this one is polarized, so you have to make sure you get that one in the right way as well. Okay, I think that's got all the main components now. We just need to put in the headers for the, the power and the speakers. And the volume control and the audio jack. So let's mount 
the headers. And we'll be ready to test this thing. When you're putting the headers in, of course, be sure you orient them so that you can actually get the wires into it. If you put them in backwards, you're going to have a tough time trying to get the wires inserted. Last but not least, well, almost last, the audio input jack. Last thing to mount, the volume control. They didn't even give you a nut to go around the volume control. Can you believe it? Okay, volume control there. Next we'll be hooking this thing up and seeing how it sounds. There we go. Okay, everything's done. Put on the volume control. Now it's going to give this thing power. I'm sure that uh, 12 volts is all it needs. It says 12 volts right there. We hook it up to a 12 volt power supply. We'll hook up some speakers and put a sound source on this thing. We'll see how it sounds. Okay, I've got the unit connected to my 12 volt power supply. I've got my speakers. I don't know if I'm in phase or not. We'll find out pretty quick. This is the line input from my DAT player here. Let's put on the power. What do you bet that LED is blue? Uh, anybody want to gamble on that, that that's going to be a blue LED? Of course it's a blue LED. Okay, play. Let's see how it sounds. So the unit is a balanced output, which means no common speakers, right? Uh, you need a separate wire, positive and negative. It is a balanced a BTL, as it's called, balanced transformerless output. So um, yeah, and uh, it sounds fine. Negative speaker terminals are the ones closest to the front. Positive on the back. If you reverse them, you're going to have a loss of bass. I just tried that just to see, and yes, they're both negatives here, both positives there. The 
TDA 7297 15 watt amplifier kit from IC Station is an easy to construct, affordable kit for anyone interested in electronics. Assembly time is less than one hour for even the least experienced kit builder. <laughs> I had to do that because when I hear this music come up, this is some of the stuff I used to use for my corporate uh, videos from like 20 odd years ago when I brings back memories when I used to have to read copy for that so couldn't resist anyway it's a great little unit and I think that uh, anybody that's looking for an easy to assemble kit this is the one if you want to get started yeah it's it's simple and quick to build that should got pretty good sound even these speakers that sound like crap sound pretty good with it probably hook it up to one of my other uh, speakers. I can't hook it up to both of my PSPs just only because uh, like my grounds are are connected together but I can certainly connect it to one of the uh, speakers and we can hear one channel out of a bit better speaker than what I've got here. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I can do it. These uh, binding posts here are not that uh, not that big. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all for a small little 15 watt amplifier. It uh, gets the job done, that's for sure. You see what I mean by BTL, right? If I ground out one pin, you hear the music, and if I do the same on the other pin, you'll get music as well. That's a little uh, TDA, what is this thing, TDA 7297 amplifier kit from IC Station. Not a bad little unit, nice little simple project, assemble that in a few minutes if you need a small amplifier for something. Not a bad way to do it. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.